by all of that. Um, yeah, one of, I actually design things for a living, and one of my clients that I've been working with over the last sort of six months or so uh, on and off is uh, STV, Scottish Television. And uh, interesting job. I, it's, it's really nice. I go up there, like, spend three days a week or something up in Glasgow. They give me my own little cubicle. Bearing in mind, I'm the guy that hasn't worked for anybody else for, like, 12 years or something. So to actually go there and have a cube and a desk and a keyboard and a phone with my name on it. The weirdest thing, what do you do with that? Nobody ever calls me. It's strange. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I've been doing is, uh, recently, over the last few weeks, is to redesign a lot of their program pages. Any Brits in the audience remember? Emma Dale? Emma Dale Farmers, it used to be. I've been doing kind of a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, targets, there's always a mudder. A mudder in Target. And uh, I've been redesigning a lot of their kind of program pages and, uh, and other stuff. And as part of this process, um, one of the first things that I needed to do when I started putting all of these kind of new visuals together, and I've worked on a lot of the new stuff as well, this is just like the sexiest stuff to show, um, is, uh, is designing grids because everything, for me at least, in design is based around grid design. So this is a, a couple of things that, uh, that I've been working on. Um, bearing in mind that they actually hired me to do a responsive design. So, Building and designing a responsive grid was really important. And uh, one of the first things that we wanted to do was to find out whether there's anything off the shelf. Could we pull anything off the shelf and actually use it? And you know, over the years, there's been a lot of people building CSS frameworks. Who's used Blueprint or 960 in the past? Most people, I would imagine. And uh, recently, there's been this whole move towards people building responsive grid frameworks. This is uh, foundation from the guys at Zurb, or there's a guy up in, I think it's Denmark, Yoni Korpi, that's been doing some amazing stuff, including this lovely golden grid system. This is what I've been using quite a lot recently, the, uh, the LESS framework, not like the LESS that was mentioned earlier on, um, because it's actually quite applicable to a lot of the kind of standard-based uh, stuff that we're doing. So the, the layout, the grid layout for, for framework uh, for, for LESS is actually pretty useful. Um, the columns are not too many, and it gives us a certain number of, uh, of columns per content width. Unfortunately, when we start getting up above Kindle kind of sizes, we get into even numbers of columns, and this is always something which annoys me. I always prefer to have odd numbers of columns um, in the design. So what we do is we start to think about actually rolling our own, rather than just you know, opening a packet off the shelf. Um, so what we did with STV, was one of their major revenue streams is advertising. And we can't change a lot of the, uh, the advertising framework. So we had to build our own. Um, and uh, you know, this is actually a, this is Chris Coy. You know CSS tricks, Chris Coy? This is his kind of quote for uh, little things. It's a uh, responsive framework CSS where he just basically says, don't declare any percentage widths. The problem with that, of course, is that we have to have non-percentage widths when we start dealing with things like advertising because there are standard ad sizes that we can't change. Everything from leaderboards to skyscrapers to regular rectangles and banners that we can't alter. Some of this stuff is coming in through ad servers um, in iframes and we can't do anything to style it. So one of the things that we did was to build a grid based around advertising. Mark Bolton's been talking about this a lot recently. And uh, he actually came up with, with a new way to um, so, to sell clients advertising packages, um, including some of these kind of small, medium, and large groups of ads, which is something we've been doing with STV for a while. But what we did was we built a designed a grid around the ad dimensions itself. So I wanted to fit a good number of columns inside that 300 pixel IMU space, maintaining the 24 pixel gutters that I like from my less framework. And we ended up with a grid that actually has a really good flexibility to it. I call it an IMU, or ad-based grid. And you notice when we start getting up into our content width, we get back my even, my, sorry, my odd number of columns again, five, seven, and nine as we go up. It's incredibly flexible. And in smaller sizes, we might just see one ad down, we might see two up, we might drop things into a sidebar at, say, an iPad format and portrait. Um, or we might get up to an iPad in landscape or a desktop design and have these ads arranged in a grid. So building a grid, designing a grid around ads works really, really well, but it's not the only thing that we can design around a grid around when we start thinking responsibly. 
Um, this is a little quote from Josh Clark, who wrote a great book um, about iOS design, and he talks about this 44 pixel fundamental block, which if you have an iPhone in your pocket, you'll find that if you look at it, the calculator buttons, the fields in mail, the reminders, they're all 44 pixels high. The icons, including margins, are double that size on the home screens. So why not build a grid based around the 44 pixel unit? So that might end up, as it would do, with more than the, column, more than the number of columns that we need. So gang those two together and end up with 88 pixel columns. And again, with these 22 pixel uh, gutters, all, everything in relation to, in proportion to that 44 pixel rule. This gives us a really good number of columns, and it fits my kind of odd number column rule 579. Here's a little tip from Mark Bolton. Don't have even numbers of pixels for the gutters. Have an odd number of pixels so you can have a one pixel rule that runs down the gutter. And you might take that 44 pixels vertically as well and actually run it into the baseline of your design. And the key thing that this leads to is rather than just taking one thing off the shelf and using it for every breakpoint or every format when we think about responsive design, actually have a different grid, design a different grid for every breakpoint and then swap between them. And I know that sounds like an awful lot of work, but actually when it comes to it, it gives us a huge amount of creative opportunities as well. And that's, you know, that's what we're all here for. So, uh, phew. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andy. Thanks so much, Andy.